So I'm going to start recording here and kind of repeat that because there are not that many people here. So um, today we're going to talk about branding and I'm going to give you just an overall synopsis of the topic. And I wanted to help you brainstorm and start planning your final project so that next week when you show up to class, I can actually help you build those components. Um, this is the final. The final project is a brand style guide. It has a lot of components to it. You'll have to do a logo. You'll have to do use your typography, your color theory, a little bit of writing, and some kind of digital aspect to it. Um, let me close my email because it'll keep dinging during the class. A oh, link. Does any did anyone not have the link? It wasn't working, huh? Well, good thing I left that on. I'm just gonna send this link and post it on Canvas. Did anyone have trouble with the link on Canvas? No, I used the link and it worked. Yeah, I, it doesn't change. I'm going to send it again. Let's see, but there are very few people here today. So I thought maybe there's something to that. Um, I'm just going to email it to a student and post it really quick in the announcements. Okay, hold on, stand by. Okay, so I posted that, we'll see. Oh, there she is. Here's Arianne. <clears throat> okay, so I'm not going to lecture and talk that much today because everything is on, um, it's on Canvas. Uh, there's a lot of old videos. I was going to record some of them over again, but I just, I can't really talk very well. So um, the content in them still holds up and it's still good, even if, like I say, something that's dated or old information. Um, if you focus on the main assignment and that topic, it's still good. So let me walk you through Canvas here. Screen share. So if we go to the module, and I made sure that even the module is live. So we're in week 13 here. Last week, this is what I lumped together. I lumped together the two assignments for layout, and we cut layout short for the illustration project. Um, and then uh, you have the option for during the spring break to do the GIF animated GIF or the layout assignment. This is an old week. Let's see. Okay, so this is the assignment where you choose one and then these are the modules full of information for each of those two weeks combined together. So now we're in week 13, which is branding. And you will see here, there's all of these videos. And this is really the key to what we're gonna be doing here. So a brand isn't necessarily the same as creating a logo or what a graphic designer would call a visual identity. So the identity or the logo is that just it, it's just the logo. The brand is everything else encompassed in that brand that makes it recognizable, gives it a voice, gives it a target audience, and all of those other things encompassed into the brand that make it have a feeling, a mood, a message, and all of that. So when we're talking about brand, it's a really a larger umbrella. It's more than a logo. It's more than the way the brand looks. It's the way everything is coming together with that brand. So what you're going to be making is a brand style guide which is like a blueprint or a book of your brand <clears throat> that will give somebody a guide. Like if you work for a big corporation, big corporations always have brand style guides. 
that they use throughout the corporation to make sure things are consistent and the messaging is clear. So I go over um, different aspects of branding in each of these videos. And so I hope you will go through and watch each of these. I, again, I'm not going to redo the lectures today just because I can't, I just can't talk that well. I'm sorry. I, this just started happening today. Um, but I do want to help you all brainstorm and I want to help you all get to a point where um, you feel confident coming in next week and we can actually work on this project. And if you're on top of it and you really get things together, it'll make the final so much easier on you. Um, so I have here final resources and this is examples of past student finals if you want to see examples. And it talks a little bit about what you're going to do. This isn't the, um, <clears throat> the final project just yet, but it's all of these resources and things that can help you. Um, you can read the project guidelines here and take a minute to load. So this is the final style guide and presentation. So you'll see here there's one, two, three, four, five components. And under each of these numbers, there's a checklist of things you have to do. So these used to be like printed hard copies and students would actually bring in bound spiral books and things like that with, with different pages featuring each of these elements. You no longer have to do that. You can make a digital PDF and then you have to present your project in some way. Um, a lot of students like to make videos or you can write your pitch um, and send it over. But I have examples of that. And then uh, I even have the scoring example. So you know exactly how to get those points. We'll give this some time to load. So you'll see here, it's just like the rubrics that I use for scoring other things, but 40 points of your final. So your final you get 40 points just by following directions and making sure you have each of these components that are supposed to be on here. Um, and then I break it down into the traditional rubric, rubric that we have. So this will give you a guide on how you're going to be scored. And this is what you are supposed to do. So spend lots of time this week reading over all of these things, um, reading over the content and start brainstorming what you're going to do for your own project. I'm gonna stop sharing here for a minute. We have enough people here now. What I really wanted you to do today before we kick off a little more discussion about branding is to do a group exercise. <clears throat> and I want you all to think of one brand that you really, really love. It could be clothing, it could be food, anything, a restaurant, anything that you really love. Um, it should be pretty easy for you to come up with something, any brand that you really like. I wanna do breakout rooms and I want you to discuss among yourselves and maybe come up with a list of like three things about that brand that make you like it. And then um, you can pick a person to talk and we'll go through that when we come back in the rooms, okay? So I'm gonna give you Let's do three rooms. It won't be too big of groups, but that'll help. And I'll give you about 15 to 20 minutes. So pick a brand that you like. It can be anything. It can be something you use. It can be something that you experience. Um, everything is branded nowadays. Even like influencers and celebrities will have brands. But just think about something that you really like and then discuss with your class why that is. Um, and why you really like that brand. And then we'll come back and talk about that big picture wise and how to utilize that in our own work to design and create something centered around a brand, okay? So go for it. And I'm gonna hop around in between rooms while we do this. You all come. All right, welcome back everyone. So <clears throat> let's just spend a couple minutes talking together 
about what you're discussing individually. So let's start with room one and whoever you chose to speak can talk a little bit about what you guys were discussing. Do you need to know? Okay, I, I, could, I could talk. So we were talking about Target. Um, we like to oh, okay, we were room one. I didn't remember oh. what group we were in. That's oh, why I, 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 yes, I realized that. <laughs> I don't remember. remember. So it's Ariane, Ashley, Danielle, and Mallory. Yeah. Okay. Well, I could talk. I don't care. Um, but we talked about Target and we're talking about how Target portrays their brand very, um, like the atmosphere they present is like really good. So like their commercials are very like homey. Um, their overall brand is just like, um, fun and they make it um, attractive to their customers and um, we're talking about like well what's the difference between like Target and Walmart because they both carry like the same like um, like products and everything but it's just how the brands are just different and like um, I don't know just the overall persona of Target and like how the brand is like laid out it's just I don't know just it brings it to however confused you know? Bed Bath and Beyond and Bed Bath body works though <laughs> <laughs> like you thought they're the same <laughs> we got it confused but it was pretty funny <laughs> i can see that but you would never confuse target and walmart right they're so distinctive and went different direction and <clears throat> gosh i hate not being able to talk <laughs> i'm a talker um so i that I love that you brought up Target because that is so interesting. Between Target and Walmart, would you say one is cooler? Like one's hipper and cooler than the other? And why is that? <clears throat> because visually, I mean, Target's branding is incredibly simple. It's, and they have two colors, red, and they're literally a Target. <laughs> um, Walmart has shifted over the years. Do they still use the sun? I think they like have the smiley face and then they, I think they still use like the sun thing. But to be yeah. honest, that reminds me more of Kmart, like how they had, you said like that blue light thing. Yeah. Uh huh. I can't really even think of Walmart's brand. So, yeah, I think they got rid of the middle part of the sun. So it's just the flares on the outside. Oh, okay. And then does the, remember how Target used to have that little spot the dog or they have that on that thing does that count as their branding too having that little so that would be a brand mascot gotcha okay and I used to have that as an illustration assignment we did it last semester and I we shifted a lot of things around for for this semester just to um make things a little bit easier but um a brand mascot is different than a logo. A brand mascot is essentially creating your own ambassador, like a fictional ambassador for your brand. So they, Target still uses the dog. Um, Walmart used to have a smiley face that jumped around. But if you compare the two brands visually across the years, <clears throat> Walmart has tried to shift to get that like Target look but Target's consistently stayed with something that's recognizable, easily identifiable, and then built up everything that you feel about Target, I guarantee doesn't come from the red Target with the type. Like that's not why you feel that way about the Target brand, but they've done something really smart and created something that's distinctive and recognizable and they have not really changed it over the years. Unlike Walmart where I honestly can't really recall their logo off the top of my head. I don't really know what it looks like. I know they use blue. I know they incorporate yellow, but it's just not ingrained in there like Target has done. So that was a really good one to discuss. Um, let's go out to room two, which is Brianna, Corey, Daniela, and Lysander. I opted late when we were talking about Starbucks, but I definitely want them to talk about that because it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, we um, we talked about a couple of brands that we liked in uh, Obey, Patagonia, um, and then we ended up talking about uh, Starbucks um, and just looking at you know how the how their branding image has evolved throughout the years and um, how it used to look like back in the '80s to how it looks like now. Um, and we talked about you know you know they're and I, actually I have a question now like with their siren on their symbol would that technically be their brand mascot too that, or that 
that's actually their logo. I mean, okay. they simplified it and they use a logo type a lot now, but that is definitely their logo. And that shows you the range. Like that is such a weird logo for something. But they also so have common. like the siren on like, cause I used to work there like, and also my third's out too. So I still, I feel you. Uh, so, um, but they have it on like all their like cups and their merchandise and stuff. So it's like when it's on that stuff, is it their like brand mascot or is that still technically like just like branding? I would say that's still branding and part of the visual identity of the business. If they like used it in a way where it's like, like say they had a commercial target or just. Starbucks doesn't really need commercials, but, and it's like, they had someone dressed as a siren or an animated siren. That's like interacting and talking. That's where it becomes more of a mascot where you kind of pull it from the brand and it does things. Um, but because it's still just a mark that they use, even though they're switching it up and adapting it, that's still part of the visual identity system. So I have a quick question just to clarify probably this last point here. So like how the brand mascot for Target, the dog, helps Target the brand feel more playful because it mm -hmm. kind of plays with the user in, in different things. Uh, Walmart smiley face, I think, probably did the same thing. But Starbucks oh, siren yeah. still doesn't really show up anywhere. It's just itself. Like it just oh, kind of the recognize recognition thing yes yeah so it's brand recognition it's brand identity it's a visual cue that this is starbucks um so it's different than a mascot which would be like let's think of a couple other mascots like the michelin man is like a logo and a brand mascot um every cereal has a brand mascot and uh so brand mascots are a little bit different where I feel like they're always for kids though i can't really think of one that's not like um aflac yeah. has the duck um mm -hmm. Target is the the first example I always think of because they have the dog. Um, fast food, so they have the King for Burger King. Um, McDonald's has I don't know if they still do they still use Ronald McDonald on stuff I don't know they probably still own like yeah you know, yeah he's that. not as prominent as he was when I was a kid but they still have that so see how that's like a little bit different and. It's less common nowadays, but it's a good branding technique where you're creating. So they'll have a spokesperson too nowadays. Like they have like the AT&T girl or like um, people that are specifically for that brand to make it friendly and open and deliver the message. And that mascot really encompasses the vibe that they're trying to portray through their brand. Brand, yeah, it's like a brand ambassador, absolutely. Um, and, but it's fictional, like they're making it up, you know? So even if they use a real person, like the girl in the AT&T commercials, they're giving her like a vibe and a personality and she's playing a character in those commercials that they want to portray through their brand. So a mascot's a little bit different than like the Starbucks siren, which is part of their visual identity system. And it doesn't do anything. It just is that mark. But it is like, so this is where you see the spectrum. Like you have the target target and that is their logo. <clears throat> and the entire brand is built off of that, the visual identity. And then you have something like Starbucks where they do often just use the logo type and kind of have a lot of liberty within that brand to do different things. But that siren is very complex. I mean, if you look at all the different shapes and a lot of things there, it's still very recognizable. It's bold, but there's a lot going on and it's not something that was probably in our visual like um like reference until starbucks decided they were going to make it so you get what i'm saying so when you're thinking about the brand that you're going to develop <clears throat> i always tell students work within your skill set and give it that you're giving it the significance. So you can do something, you can go the Starbucks route and make something very distinctive, very elaborate and um, something that is, you know, random, or you can keep it really simple and do something like a Nike swoosh or a Target, and then you supplement the meaning with all of the other components of that brand. Let's go to the last group, room three, Jacob, Miguel, and Paige. 
Yeah. yeah so uh, we were talking, we all picked one and we we're just ended up talking about uh, vans, just how simple the logo is. It's just that uh, sans serif uh, font, mm -hmm. but literally just the V going over the other letters. <clears throat> yeah, we we're just talking about uh, how simple that logo is and they really haven't changed it much and it's just super recognizable. Yeah, so consistency. I heard somebody talk about that with Obey too, like how they always use the type in the brand yeah. Obey. So consistency is important, um, especially with the way the brand is worded. You want to pick a font and a typeface that works really well um, and then keep using that for that specific typeface whenever the brand is worded because that becomes like your logo type. So what you'll want to do is create what I call a lockup where you have a mark and um, the type, and then you can pull those apart and put them together and use them in different ways. So nowadays brands more than ever have to be really versatile because you're hitting people at so many different points. We have the whole digital social media spectrum where like back in the day when I first started working in design, when we designed a logo, it was like no gradient stick to no more than two to three colors. There were all these rules because you had to think with how things were going to be seen and outputted and everything was printed and things were embroidered. And most of the time when you were using a logo, you'd have to output it in some way. Now with digital, that completely changes and we yeah. have so much liberty. Yeah. So it's like, sure, put a gradient in there. It's probably going to be used like 90% of the time in some digital media. Um, and But and you still want something that works when, like if you have a big corporation, you're going to embroider like a polo shirt, you still want it to work in that way. So those are things to think about when you're deciding on like the visual identity of your brand. How are you going to use it? What type of business this is this? And how are you going to have to be using this? If it's a brand like, um, if it's a personal brand, like you want to brand yourself, you're more than welcome to do that for this assignment. And you might be using like resume, social media, things that are going to be online. So you have more room to, to move things around and to incorporate like a whole color palette um, and to use things where if something's going to be printed, um, <clears throat> I am so sorry about my voice, everyone. <laughs> If something's going to be printed, like I had a student um, brand his father's fruit stand once, so he made like shirts and hats and things like that, and it would be like on the truck and beyond things. So you have to think about output and maybe limit your color palette. Um, so a lot of times people too get into these situations where they create this beautiful logo with all of these colors and things like that, and then they want to make a shirt. Well, shirts, if you're screen printing, you can digitally print on shirts nowadays too, which is really cool. But if you're gonna have something traditionally screen printed, the more colors you use, the more it costs. Yeah. So you wanna think about those things too. So this was a really good discussion. I think what I heard a lot of you talk about, you like colors. Um, when you were talking about Target, you said you just like the feel, like the mood they create. It's got an atmosphere. Um, has anyone watched the new documentary on Netflix yet called White Hot about Abercrombie and Fitch? No? no I, just, I want to. I want to. <laughs> I watched it immediately because I'm friends with Carla Barrientos, who's in it, and she actually graduated from CSUV. Um, and then I saw they sent out an email about it today. I'm like, yay. <laughs> um, but it's so interesting to me because it's really a documentary about branding. Um, and I personally do not agree with the direction they went and what they're selling, but they went for it in a direction and they went for it hard and they really honed in on who their target audience was, who they want to sell to, and created an atmosphere down to like the way the stores smelled, um, to who could wear and couldn't wear their clothes. And so... Uh, if you have a chance and you want to watch a doc and you like documentaries, that one's really interesting. Um, but it really is like a big lesson on branding. So has anyone given any thought to what they want to do for their final yet? No. So what I really want you to do this week is think about what you're going to do for your final. Let me go back to the modules and I'll screen share.
So you'll see here in the final resources, you're going to create a brand that you can utilize beyond this class. So I used to always push to make students do something that was real, like you couldn't make something up. Um, however, last semester, yeah, thought versus decide, that's a good point. If you're thinking about it, that's good. Um, I want you to come to class next week with a decision so that I can help you build these components. Because you'll see here, look at all these things that you have to make for your final. You have a logo identity system. You have some writing where you have to do your brand position and statement. And you have, um, so resume is on there because a lot of students in the past have chosen to do a personal brand. Last semester, I had more students than ever want to work on a project that was not real, but they wanted it to be real someday. So like they really want to open a coffee shop someday or they really want to start like a, or what was another one? Like an event planning business, things like that. So I do think this is worthwhile and an important step. If you have something like that, that you know you want to do someday, but it's technically not a real functioning business yet, you can make that your brand. Um, what I don't want you to do is make up like a fake brand that you would never like actually be able to execute. I want you to think about it on a smaller scale, something that you could actually do or that you would strive to do. Um, I don't know, when I say that, you could probably do anything any of you wanted to do uh, someday if that's your goal, but like, I don't want it to be completely fake. I want you to have some sense of like connection to this project. It's really useful to do a personal brand if you are a senior and you'll be graduating and you're gonna be job hunting. Um, you can do the resume, you can do um, a portfolio site, pick something that will be useful to you down the road. I have a lot of students pick family businesses. They'll have a family business that's like the fruit stand or a furniture business or mechanic shop, things that have just never thought to be branded before. Because I know personally with my, like my own brand and my own business, you're so busy working all the time that like you don't think to give this a cohesive concrete brand. So if you have a business like that, like a family restaurant or a family store or <coughs> some kind of a service, um, moving companies, that's been a thing. Um, bounce house companies, these like side gigs that some of you might have, you can use that for this project. So I really want you to pick something that can be useful and that you can actually utilize down the road. It's wide open. So that is why, long story short, resume is in here because a lot of students choose to do a personal brand. So it's something for them um, and they're just branding themselves. Like I am a senior, I'm going to be applying for jobs. I'd really like to work in a, as an influencer or a social media manager and they make an account and they make a resume and everything's focused around that. So if it's a personal brand, you can use your name or I've had some artist students that work under like a pseudonym for their art. There's all kinds of things you can do. And you will see some of these examples when you click past exam like examples of students. Um, you'll see things like, this is the furniture company I was talking about. And these are real student projects. Oh, this one's Hello. actually, this is actually the video because I want to show you examples of students presenting their final project. So that's one of the components of this project. Um, but here's the style guide part of it. And this is Dog Ear Publishing. The student um, wanted to work in publishing and create a company that does that. Um, This student was a really great graphic designer who wants to just brand his studio and his work. This was a student, and I thought this was so smart. And it was funny because people ask me for this service all the time. I'm like, oh, I have a student that branded that. I should look it up. Um, this student did pet sitting on the side and decided to brand her pet sitting company. And I'm telling you, even if it's something small like this, if you create a brand for it, if you create some kind of 
online portfolio, whether it's a real website or just an Instagram account, people will come and hire you and it will, you will get so much more business than if it's just like, you're just kind of randomly doing it because they'll feel like this is professional. This person wants to do this and they'll feel like this is a very professional valid service that they can be uh, using the student for. So I thought this was really smart and a really great way to use the project. And then um, the student is an artist and she branded her art and she's a really talented painter. And so you can look through these and you'll see how each of the components reflect back to this checkbox on this final project. So those are for you just to review so you can get ideas. And again, this breaks down how it's scored. And then um, here's the fun part about this project. I have been forcing you all semester to learn these Adobe programs. I think it's really important. It's a great skill to have. If you want to be working in professional design in any capacity, you're going to have to learn these programs. But if this is just a class to check a box and to get a requirement, and you don't see yourself keeping up your Adobe subscription and continually to work through these programs in the future, there is a program called Canva and it's online based. And a lot of people, I find it incredibly frustrating to use because I need that control and precision um, from Adobe because I'm so used to it. But a lot of students find Canva much more user-friendly. There are tons of templates in there that you can rework and restyle. And you really become more of a curator than a designer. Like you're not pulling things from thin air and creating them, but you can pull things that are already there and move them around and kind of curate what you think looks good. And if you would like to explore this to complete your final project, you're more than welcome to. Um, but in order to make this work well and effectively, you still have to use all of those things that we've been studying, your color theory, your typography, um, your principles and elements of design. So you're curating things that are already made or maybe restyling a template, but you still need that like design sense and learning all of those principles and elements to make this look really effective and to not make it look like you just copied a template and things like that. But that is a resource for you. So some of you might be really relieved to know about that. Unsplash, I've shared this link before, is a great place to get a photography if you need it. And then Creative Market is a cheaper source to buy individual like templates, fonts, graphics, um, things like that. So you can really kind of be a curator in this project if you feel like your skills of building something from the ground up aren't as strong. You can download and source things and put them together. So you still need to put it together and know how it all works together, how it fits together, have an overarching umbrella of a look and feel and vibe for your brand, but you don't have to create everything from scratch. All you'll have to do is add like a sources page at the end of your PDF where it's like, like if you download, here, let me go to Creative Market and show you. So if you go to a page like Creative Market, there's Instagram templates, product mockups. It's product mockups are really cool. And we actually use them all the time because it's really easy to, when I do a style guide for a client, I want to show them what their brand will look like on different things. Let me go to that. <coughs> so you can get these bundles and you'll get, um, let's see, things like cans or hats. And let me, let me open one up and show you how these things work. to move you all around. Mockups, that's where we keep it. So we have all of these mockups where these files are really cool. You'll see like a t-shirt, the stamped look on those coasters or signage, things like that. 
I'm going to open this one up. This is really cool. So it looks like it's actually a raised print of this logo. And in this file, just double click where it says your logo here and it opens up the effect and see this one that says logo. If I double click that, this logo over here, and this is a Photoshop file, this logo is actually being pulled from this document. So then if I were to take, let's see if I, I don't have a logo just sitting here. I'll just make something. <laughs> I'll just do an oval, bump that up, and then just type in sample logo. So if I were to take this, I'm in Illustrator right now. I'm copying this, Command C. I'm jumping back over to Photoshop, Command V. I've pasted that. It's asking me if I want to do pixels or a smart layer. Pixels is fine for this. See how it came in really small? So I'm going to scale it up. And I have a fill in my circle, which I forgot to turn off. I could just jump back over to Illustrator and get rid of that, which I'll do and recopy that in. I want it to be transparent. And then I turn off their layer. I just save. I just hit Command S to save this. And then when I hop back over to that file, see how it changed it automatically for me? And it's got that cool shiny effect and everything on it. So these kinds of things can be found on sites like this, if that's something you want to do for your brand and it makes sense. Um, every brand is different. Every student has things that make more sense to their brand. If things on, let's see, where am I going? If things on this checkbox do not seem to make sense for your brand, like if um, the resume doesn't make sense for your brand, don't do it. Pick um, two printed items. If you don't want to do a stationary set, you could do a flyer or a brochure, or you could do a t-shirt or something else. So you choose what makes sense for your brand. And you can always talk to me about it if you're not sure if that'll work. When it comes to the digital component, you can either make real social media accounts for these brands and just do like nine, if it's Instagram, nine posts, if it's TikTok, um, like just do like six TikTok. Um, you have to do the whole TikTok. You just have to do like the fake mock up the cover, what it would look like. Um, you're just showing me the vibe of these social media accounts and what they would look like. Um, if you do a website, you uh, can just create it digitally in Photoshop. It doesn't have to be functional and show me what the website would look like. Or you can use one of those third party sites like Wix and you can actually make your website. It's up to you and what you feel like would be most convenient and the most useful to you moving forward in this class. So let's see. So here's another example of a video and these are your resources. So next week when we get together in class, we're, it's a, gonna be a work day. I want you to come in. I want you to know what you're going to do for your final. And I am going to be available to help you start creating these pieces if you're lost or if you don't know what to do for these. So next week is going to be a work day and we're going to do the brand together. So if I come back over to class calendar, um, we're a little bit off from this, but we're at the week after spring break. So this is where we we're supposed to do design for social media and web, and then next week would be the brand introduction, and then it would work on the final. So instead, we're bumping up branding to this week. I lumped in design and digital design into the week before the final, and then you'll have next week, we'll work together, and then uh, you'll, we'll have one more work week before our recap day. So I'm giving you more time because I know a lot of you struggle with the programs and the execution part of it, to have more time to actually work with me and ask me for help. And so I can help you actually execute these things. Cause it, there's a lot of pieces to the final project. So as a lot of you are 
expressing your struggle with the assignments and the programs, I just thought this final is going to be a lot for you to take on. It is a big part of your grade. And so I want to be available to help you all with this as much as you can, as I can. So that's where we're going to be at for the remaining part of the semester. I know some of you were still having trouble with the assignment that was assigned before spring break. So I will be around to help you with that. But um, I haven't changed the dates on this. I need to go in. What the only thing you're going to have to do this week is to decide what you're going to do for your final and participate in this discussion board to get feedback from the class. And I will activate that and make it go live um, after we uh, wrap up here. So besides thinking of what you're going to do for your final, you need to post in that discussion board and then come to class next week ready to, um, to work on that project and have a plan. So next week when you come in, you should know this is going to be my business. This is going to be the name of the business. And you don't have to have like the pieces of the visual identity ready yet, but you need to know what you're going to do. And then I can go through and either screen share and like show you how to build it, or you can screen share with me and we'll just go around like that and just have a work day together. Okay. Cool. Okay. So that please go into the module and watch all of those old lectures and videos. I'm not going to just, I'm going to talk anymore uh, <coughs> unless you have questions, uh, especially if you have questions from the past assignments and things like that. But if you feel like you're good and you can move forward on your own, you're free to go for the evening and I will be around for questions. Oh, thank you. I feel fine. I just started losing my voice. Because I've been having sinus troubles. I think it's all related. I know, I sound awful. <laughs> Yes, I hope you feel better soon as well. Um, my only question was, yeah, about the assignment from last week. Um, I don't know if I'm crazy, but I didn't see like an actual video. You're not crazy. Jacob informed me uh, midweek this week that I did not turn the module on. So nobody's crazy. I should have brought that up at the beginning of class. I went through the whole lecture and showed you all everything in class, but I didn't publish the entire module. I just published the pages. Okay. Okay. So nobody's crazy. I put that in an announcement. Um, so you can take more time on that. Um, I, I intended for you to have all of that time to work on it over a spring break, but um, we'll just kind of lump everything together as we move forward and show up and I can help you with those. So I do think the GIF animation is the easier of the two assignments. Right. Um, so, okay, so the explanation for that is just in the uh, recording of last, that last week's uh, lecture. So let me go to the module. So if you go to week 10, there is, um, yeah, it's in the module and there's a YouTube video recorded on how to do that assignment. So if you want to do that assignment, it's under the digital design for social media and web. If you want to do the layout assignment. Oh, okay, okay. Watch the stuff for layout assignment. Um, and then you can gotcha. decide which Oh, I, I guess I just breezed right over that today because I was like, okay. But I just turned it on. Um, so it wasn't your fault. I forgot to. You know, no worries. I did see the announcement and I was like, this morning was when I was getting ready to start it. And I was like, oh, okay. Oops. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You can take some more time to do it. Um, I'll change the due date on it too. Cool. Thank you. You're I hope you feel better. Thanks. Can I bug you for a couple things real quick, professor? Of course. So um, I was working on my thing. I was gonna do the design one where you like cut out the background and then stick it on there. Um, I, I spent like 45 minutes on four different photos and then all of them didn't sit right with like the texture, the clothing or the hair. So I started, so I found one and I did it. And when I put it in the InDesign, it was really grainy and blurry. So I was just wondering like, what should like the 
like image size or DPI before the photos for it to not be so grainy and gross when I get to InDesign? So first, did you make sure your InDesign preview was set at um, high? What is it called? View screen mode. Like when I'm setting, when I'm starting a new document? Yeah, so uh, InDesign will have a display performance. So it has what's called fast display, typical display, and then high quality display. So first make sure it's high quality display um, because it could just be set at like fast display and it pixelates it just to make it faster. Okay, because and the picture is not like the greatest, but it, sh it shows up clear on... Um... Photoshop. That's why I was like, why is it like only weird over here? Do you have, so it's probably, if it's fine in Photoshop, but weird in InDesign, it's probably just the display setting in InDesign is set to fast. Okay. So if you move it to high quality, it should look the same. Okay. So if you move to high quality, also, what should the, I went with their um like stock web, like uh size and then their, their DP, I think it was like 600 is what it said or something like that. It was just their standard, whatever for web. Um, if you follow the assignment specifications, I think I have eight and a half, uh, 11 by 17, but as long as it's okay. like a rough mean, shape. Okay. Yeah. Just cause I was looking and I couldn't find it. And then I was like, um, I don't, uh, okay. But yeah, if you're pulling a photo off the internet and you're, you know, if you make a 300 DPI document, eight and a half by, or 11 by 17, that's pretty big. So mm -hmm. if you want to size it down, something that probably what you use would be fine. Or did you say 600? That's actually kind of small. So make sure it's at least like 1920. Okay. Pixel. Just because yeah, that was their standard um, thing. Yeah, 1920 by I think 1080 would be a good standard size. Okay. Where it's large enough, but um, but not like, but it's a good screen size. So it's not too big. Okay. That's all I wanted. To, I was just going to ask, like, just because I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't figure this out. <laughs> yeah, I, if it's fine in Photoshop and fuzzy in InDesign, it's probably just your display setting. Okay, okay. I'll take a look at that. And then okay. um, what date were you going to make this due? I'll just bump it to next week. Next week? Okay, cool. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome.